So we've now seen how to sign empty messages, one bit messages, and four bit messages. So we're now ready to actually understand the original um, signature scheme that Lamport came up in 1979. So it's a one time signature scheme, so we can only use it to sign a single time. But okay, well, we understand how to sign one, four, and therefore arbitrary many bits in the message. And so what, uh, what Lambert is suggesting is you take your arbitrary length message, hash it down to a fixed length, say 256 bits, and then you assign these 256 bits the same way that we signed four bits or one bit. So for each of those 256 bits in the hash of the message, we're releasing the corresponding secret key to this being bit being 0, 1, while well, we release S0 or S1 for this position, for this one, S0, 1 for that position. So we have basically double indices. We have S0 from 1, from 0 till 255, and S1 from 0 till 255. And we have the matching public keys. So when we're doing the key pair here, we're doing this 256 times. So for each bit, we're generating a bit key pair. And then what the zip is doing, it's just, well, each key pair has public key, private key, public key, private key, and it's just um, aligning all the public keys and aligning all the secret keys from public private keys. Then to sign the message, um, there's another little technicality from, from Python. In order to run SHA-3 on something, it actually has to be a byte string. And so you have to take your message and turn it into a byte string. So whatever you write, that your message was, say, 200, then that turns into the message here, and then I can hash it. And then the next line is just grabbing these 256 bits one by one, and then for each of them, releasing the correct secret key. To open the signed message, then checks for each of those 256 bits whether, well, the bit that claims to sign has the correct secret key by doing one hash. So for each bit, it does one hash computation, and so in total, there are 256 hash computation on top of, well, rehashing the message. So my message to 100 comes in, and then the same steps happen in order to turn into H, the same steps happen in order to grab the right bits, but afterwards it's opening rather than, well, signing. But that's a very, very long signature. So what that what signature is having in the public key, then, well, the signature needs to have for each um, in the public key, you need to have for each bit 256 bit for 0, 256 bit for 1. And also in the secret key, the private key, you have 256 bits for 0, 256 bits for 1. And then the signature is revealing half of those, so there are 256 elements, and each of those has 256 bits or 32 bytes. So we're now going to see an idea due to internets, which is kind of doing a trade-off between the signature and public key length and the time it takes to generate and to verify these signatures. So let's go back to signing just four bits. So we want to sign a message, which is a number between 0 and 15. And you would like to do this with one value of 32 bytes or 256 bits. And so for that, I need to uh, define the iteration of a hash function. So h to the i on some string x will be i times the application of h. So if I have i equals 16, then it means I'm computing h of h for h for 16 times of this x. And so what the internet scheme is doing is taking a random secret key and then applying the hash function 16 times to it to get the public key. So 16 times comes from, well, we want to sign orbit messages. And then to sign a message, the signature on it will be, the M up there is not a typo, so it's really whatever the M is, a number between 0 and 15, that many times we apply to the secret key. So the public key was 16 times applied, and then the signature is between 0 and 15 times applied. Okay, so that means, well, I'm going back one step from the public key, two steps from the public key, up to 15 steps or 16 steps from the public key for signing zero. And so in order to verify that this matches, I have to go further in the chain. So if I signed zero, I have to compute 
all 16 hashes if I sign 15. That's just one more hash to do. So I'm doing at most, well, I'm doing m hashes for signing and I'm doing 16 minus m hashes for verification. Whereas in the Lamport verification, well, this is a 4-bit message, so I'll be doing 4 hashes. Here I'm doing at worst 16 hashes. So there's more computation, but the signature is just a single value rather than 4 times 32 bytes. And the public key is just a single value rather than 8 times 32 bytes. So that is a big saving in space at a small cost of computation. So here's the same thing in code. And note it says weak internet, so you can start thinking about what goes wrong here. It's again a one-time signature scheme, so that is not the scary part. So if you do this twice, you're on your own. But there is more wrong. But let's go through the code briefly. So I'm picking a random key. I'm again concerned about outputting the secrets from the from the random uh, from the operating system. So that's why the secret key is also hash. And afterwards, I'm, well, iterating the, from range 16 means 0 to 15, I'm iterating that many times the hashing. So the public key in the end will be 16 operations of this key, of this uh, hash function. And then I'm outputting the public key and the secret key. So then the signing is saying, okay, well, if it's not, between 0 and 15, then something is wrong. If it's an integer, I complain. And afterwards, I take the secret and m times, just as I said before, I apply the hash to it and then reveal that. And the opening, I run 60 minus this number and check whether this matches. So, okay. This works. This does exactly what it should do. And the nice part is it does cover I mean, anybody who has a secret key can sign and the signature will be valid. So it's a sound scheme in the sense that, well, if you know the secret key, then you can actually sign messages. However, um, it also allows some Eve to forge messages. Not in every case, but for most cases. So let's take the most extreme case that I signed zero. You know, Eve, can you figure out how to sign one or two or three? Exactly. So you're just taking the zero, the, the SK to the zero H, I mean, not at all applied H, and you iterate forward, which is a public operation, until you get your favorite M. So unless my message was 15 itself, I can actually, well, Eve can actually take the hash of my signature as a message, as a signature on m plus 1, or m plus 2, m plus 3, until, well, it gets to 15. So that's not what we want. We want to have a signature scheme where nobody can compute forgeries for any messages, and not just for, well, for 15 nobody can compute forgeries, but otherwise, perfectly. Now, an obvious way to deal with this is to just run two chains. So this one runs from 0 to 15 with m, and this one runs from 0 to 15 with 16 minus m. And so, well, everybody can run this foot forward, but here, say if you have this value, would need to go backwards rather than forwards. So if you have this value as your m, then here you can hash forward, but here you would have to go backwards. So let's call this the slow internet scheme, which is just doing two of these operations, so we have the, the zero chain and the one chain, and then, well, on the zero chain we're going forward, and on the one chain we're going backwards. And then for the checking we also need to do both of them. So in total between signing and opening, there are 16 steps of hash for this one, 16 steps of hash for this one, and actually in this time each of the signer and the verifier has to do exactly 16 steps. So it's kind of fair, but we could do faster. Actually note that we, here we could actually stop at 15 iterations because, well, here the 15th step requires that this one is at 0, as at 1, so going all the way back. But, well, let's reuse the code here. 
What Linton has actually proposed is slightly different from this. So let's look at the, at the general signature scheme. And again, we want to assign the 256-bit hash output from an arbitrary message. Okay, so there's one parameter W, which is the Winternet parameter. And you're kind of committing to being willing to run two to the W steps. So this was a 16 in my example. So you can sign W bit messages with one chain. So you have 256 bits. So if again, you want to write something in, well, at most four bits at once, then you would have to compute 64 chains, each running for four, and each covering four bits, each running for 16 steps. And then you take your message or the hash of the message and you write this in base 2 to the W. So base 16 in our example. And those are these parts of it. If you wouldn't pick a device of 256 for your W, then you're rounding up and you're padding with zeros on the top bits. Now here you have your T1, which is it's 256 divided by W, that many chains. And all of those chains will be running forward. But then what Winter has said is a nice idea is that in order to avoid running as many chains backwards, you can kind of compute a checksum C if you can make it work such that C gets larger if N gets smaller. So we don't have like this exact feature here where we're having one on one, but you would need to reverse one of the chains in order to sign something else. And so here's how he defines the checksum namely taking this 2 to the w, which would be the upper bound on the value, and then you're subtracting this message part. Now, if this would be c1 till ct minus 1, it would be the old idea, but here we're just adding those up. And we're adding those up not times 2 to the w, but just as integers. And so, well, we can check that each of those is at most t1 times t to the w, and then we also include forward hash chains for those, well, for C. So that gives us another T2, which is, well, this uh, the seal expression, which is over there. And so then we have those chains, but they can now run forward as well, because C gets larger if MI gets small. And so the public keys, then now for each of the chains, we're publishing the result value. So we have M1 values for the forward messages, and we have T2, uh, T1 values here, and we have T2 values for these checksum chains. So that's what Winternet is doing um, for the one-time signatures. And here's an example for W equals 8. So this is using a bigger number. So we just look at 4. 8 is another nice device of 256 bits. Uh, 256, so we're having 32 chains. We are writing our m in base 2 to the 8, so 256, uh, 32 chains, so we're having 32 parts of this m, so it's m0, m1, so m31. And then for the, for the checksum, we're running from 0 to 31, we're having 2 to the 8 minus that. Now the bound is another nice power of 2, which is a lot smaller than the other value, so it's just a little bit larger than 2 to the 8. Okay, so we'll need two chains for that one. And so we're having C1 and C0 for this. And so we have 32 public keys. And then we can sign with all of those chains. 